A number of years ago, I was called up by the organization that uh, does the Lag Boime Parade, and they asked me, could you please uh, speak? We're going to have a Lag Boime Parade in the yard of Montauk Junior High School, and uh, we're going to have a few thousand kindleich over there. Would it be okay if you give them a Dvar Torah and speak about Lag Boimer? Shabbos, before Lag Boimer, a group of people came over to me. They came from the street, and they came into the shul by Muslim. They called me to the door, and uh, they asked me, we, we see that you consented. They hung up posters that you're going to be speaking for uh, this Lag Boimer parade, and uh, we suggest that you don't take this uh, uh, job and don't speak. I said, listen, I have one over here in Amunis Yisrael, the Meshkiach, Rabovson, Zalzang, Gesund, and Stark, we're at the end of Musa right now. Why don't you wait till the end? And uh, we'll go over and ask a Shaila. Well, let's ask Tyre, what says Akht? After davening, I went over to the Meshkiach, Zalzang, Gesund, and Stark, and I asked him, uh, what does the Meshkiach think I should do? People came to tell me I shouldn't be part of this. I don't understand why, what. I asked them to come to speak to you afterwards, and they refused. He said, what could be better than being mechazek Yiddish kinder? It's the best thing. Of course you should go and ayevash min amaligim. Don't be embarrassed. Just do what you have to do and go and without slacha. Well, sure enough, like Boimeh, the Rabbi Shalaylam brought out hoitzi chama min artika. It was a beautiful, gorgeous day. Stunning blue sky and the whole, whole Montauk High School yard was filled with chairs and there wasn't an empty seat. Can I know her? Thousands of kids gathered. It was a kiddush kavay shemaim that I haven't seen in a long time. And mamish brought me to tears. A few people stopped me and they told me that you're mixing into wrong parties. I said, I don't know if I'm wrong parties. I know one thing. I'm a member of Klai Yisrael and that's the way I wanted to be. Vizeho. But it was uncomfortable because some people were giving me a little a little rough time. But time went on and everything was forgotten. Came to the point, Baruch Hashem, I married a few children. And now I had a daughter that was ready for marriage. Shidduchim were coming in, she was a wonderful girl. And it came one point in Chodesh Elul that I had like a list of 20 wonderful Bachram to choose from. And I was sure, okay, here it goes. There's no problem here. Can I know her, a girl with so many Shidduchim? I just have to be selective which one. But to my disappointment, in a few days, everything dissipated and I was left with nothing. Now I had no Shidduchim at all. And this is the crucial time. This is Bein Azmanim. This is uh, before Sukkot. When the Bachram are here from Eretz Yisrael. Anyway, it was Ere Rosh Hashanah. Ere Rosh Hashanah, I knew I have to go. I go every year to my parents. I had to go to um, Moses, uh, uh, to um, Beth Moses um, uh, Cemetery. And I went. My son wanted to come along with me. It was after Slichas. We fasted half a day on Rosh Hashanah. And my son tells me, he says, Tati, if we're passing by on the belt, don't you pass by the oil of the Lubavitcher Rebbe? So I said, you know what? It's there at Rosh Hashanah. Why not? We just came from, from the Baba. Let's go. I came in. I wrote a kvittel. And I just was mechavn. I said, Rabbi Nishalaylam, in the schus that I followed, and I did what I was supposed to do, and I know this was the Ratzon of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, I ask, please, I should be helped that my daughter should find the Shidduch Bekarev Ubekalas. And I took the kittel, I ripped it up, and I had in mind, and I said also, the Rebbe Weist, that I, I was a narrative for this by some people, and I'm a very neutral person. I don't like to get involved in anything, but I did it anyway because I know that this is the right thing, and I hope this chus will be meritful that my daughter can have a shilich bekar of a bekalis. A few hours later, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I got a phone call. 
Now, who's on the phone? Rabosha. Rabosha, I got your phone call before. I didn't call you because I'm going to come back tonight. I'm going to see you later on by Mincha. So I'll see you then. I'll speak to you. I figured that what's the problem? He said, no, no, I got to speak to you right now. I said, what's the emergency? He says, I'm not going to say it's an emergency, but I want to read you a shidduch for your daughter. So I said, that's what you have to call me? Out of Rosh Hashanah, you have nothing else but that? And he tells me, I feel there's something pressing me that I got to get this off my chest now before I see you. And I'm asking you, you know the people. The father of the boy's name is Shmuel Horowitz. And the bocher, his name is Yitzchak Meir. And I said, you know what? I'll think about it. He says, yeah, but get back to me. Ma'osa Kodesh Baruch Hu. And I was invited to a bris. And Shmuel Horowitz, Shmuel Horowitz, the father of this boy, was also invited to the same bris. And we sat down next to each other. And he smiles to me. And I say, I understand why you're smiling. They read us a shidduch out of Rosh Hashanah. And... Uh, let me ask you, what do you think? or not? So he smiles, he says, my daughter was in, in Eretz Yisrael together with your daughter, and uh, she feels it's very, very tsugapast, very fit. So I said, you know what? If that's the case, let's go on with it. They met, I met him, they met here. On the first day, Chalamoid Sukkos, we had the Vart, the L'chaim. My daughter became a Kala. And I told the Meshkiach, Rav Osen, what happened. So he said, the Rebbe Bleipnis Shildik, you did for something that the Rebbe always wanted to have, the Lag Boimbe Parade, to be Makar of Yidin, you did, is in Shildik. And Baruch Hashem, I was paid back.